Big cut. And a quick look at our rules of combat based on three five-minute rounds and, of course, five five-minute rounds for championship bouts. And, of course, in the amateur division, that changed to three three-minute rounds and, of course, five three-minute rounds for championship bouts in the amateur division. It's based on the 10-point must system, judging criteria, and to get things started, we'll go ahead and throw it to the cage. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout and a catch weight of 215 pounds. Your referee in charge of this bout, Mike Valdez. Introducing first, the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing 6'1", official weight 203.8 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, from Berlin, New Mexico, presenting Eduardo Silva. Here's a opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at six feet tall, official weight, 213.8 pounds. He represents K Loco MMA. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting Aaron Montano. <laughs> Once again, your referee in charge of this three round catchweight bout. Mike Valdez with the final instructions. All right, fighters, went over the rules in the locker room, protecting yourself at all times. Obey my command at all times. Touch him up. Let's fight. And here we go, round one. Starting off in the heavyweight division, something you're very familiar with, but uh, this is the amateur division. A lot different. Tony Kryptonite Lopez uh, joining us in the commentary booth. Yeah, thanks. Nice to be here, Steve. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you know what? Heavyweights are the same amateur and, you know, pro. They still hit hard. The only difference is, you know, they, they're a little, they're a little uh, more hesitant, I think, you know, in amateurs. Just because, you know, they, didn't want, they want to make sure they impress. And, you know, you make a good point there. It's not like the gloves are lighter or heavier or, you know, you know got more cushion. It's the same thing, essentially. It's just minutes are a little bit different. Um, I believe elbows on the ground are taken away a bit. Yeah. Stuff like that, especially when they're starting off. Those things will cut you up so quick. Oh, yeah. They just want to make sure, you know, you make it to pro. Now, when you started out, there really wasn't an amateur division, was there? I mean, no, this no, is something that's really just been brought upon us in the recent yeah. years. No, that amateurs didn't exist when I started, which I didn't mind. You know, it was good. It but. seems like everybody just kind of had to get thrown in there and go, okay, time to shine, throw you in the fire. Yeah, well, the more the, the more the, the sport, you know, it expanded, more people were just jumping in. Hey, I want to fight, I want to fight. But then that's where amateurs came in because we had to make sure these guys knew what they were doing and yeah, it was you, safe for them. Uh, absolutely. That's a good point, too. You know, you can't just have guys coming off the street going, hey, man, I, I've had a couple bar brawls. I know what's up. And it's like, no, two entirely different things. Exactly. And, of course, Eduardo Silva in the blue gloves and Aaron Montano in the red gloves. Montano a little hesitant. You can see that Silva's been really trying to push and lay the pressure on him. Nice uppercut attempt. Nice smile. He can't help but smile, though. It's kind of like swinging <laughs> and a miss, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no. Silva's got some good movement right there. You know, he's moving his head. 
Uh, seven, he, he, he's throwing. Oh, Ooh. yeah, he doesn't like that. Oh, yeah, he, he looks stunned. That's it. Oh, that ref hands up there. That would have been a legal goal. Kick right there. Yeah. Montano got clipped him right on the jaw, right in the teeth, I'd have to say. Yeah, he, he was eating that knuckle sandwich. Yeah, that was straight to the right there. He's like, that stings. You can see his lip just open up right away. Comes in with the uppercut. Almost goes for that soccer kick. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Mike Baltez has seen enough. Steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, one minute and 53 seconds of round number one. Your winner by TKO, Eduardo Silva. Ladies and gentlemen, from the sensational Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the bantamweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Robert Romero. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet tall, official weight, 144 point Four pounds. He represents Team Damage Inc. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sirocco, New Mexico, presenting Ray the Executioner Visa. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner stands at five feet seven inches tall, official weight, and even 146 pounds. He represents the West Side Power Gym. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Rio Rancho, New Mexico, presenting Chase French Silk Eminem. And here we go, round one. Between Visa and Eminer. Eminer in the red gloves, Visa in the blue gloves. Eminer uh, tries to close the distance immediately. Visa will get the better of the exchange there. The scramble going on between the two. Chase uh, being called to get his underhooks. And Ray Viza is uh, just continuing to work him up against the cage. Nice takedown by Eminem right there. I was going to say, you know, since you put the pressure on him, I expected a takedown. I didn't think he had pushed up in the cage, but. Now he's giving up a little bit of that arm, and now giving up the back is Viza. It's a little dangerous. They're doing a good job there, you know, switching positions, keeping control. And they are constantly, man, just grinding here, trying to get into a victory here. I think Visa is in trouble. Well, yeah, he, he's got to do something. He can't just sit there right there. Ref is going to jump in and stop this right now. Once they start going under the armpit is when it's over, too, man. That, those are just painful shots. Visa still in it, surviving. Still giving up his back, but in a secure position. According to the ref, it, uh, you know, Eminer is not just trying to finish this fight, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of heat behind it anymore. But uh, Visa is just covering up, man. Got to get out of this. I don't know, man. I, I mean, Visa has got to do a lot more than what he's doing. And again, it looks like Eminem is slowing down a lot. He might have tired himself out there. Oh, he's like going for a choke. Oh, turns things up. Oh, oh Liza in trouble, and that's it. Nice. It was a very, uh, it's like a ninja victory. He kind of just went in there and boom. <laughs> yeah, he always got dropped <laughs> rock right there. He's all, since you choked me out, can I, like, slam you to the ground? Just as, like, kind of a consolation prize? Yeah. <laughs> Baez is like, this is the strength you could have dealt with if you didn't finish me off here early. But man, what a great job by both fighters. But Eminer just comes in and just finishes it from the back. 
you know, it was a good changeup right there. You know, after he was slowing down, he just switched up the you know, choke and it was there. What a changeup, though. You know what I mean? After like 20, 30 punches, I'm going to just choke Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, two minutes and four seconds of round number one. Your winner by top out from a rear naked choke, Chase French Silk Eminem. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the flyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Joe Coca. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil blue corner, standing five feet seven inches tall, official weight 132.6 pounds. He represents the Zia Fight Club. Ladies and gentlemen, from Aztec, New Mexico, presenting Alex True Grit Jones. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet nine inches tall, official weight 131.4 pounds. He represents Fit and HB. Ladies and gentlemen, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting Ronald Smith. Once again, your referee in charge of this three-round flyway bout, Joe Coca, now with the final instructions. Fighters, you've been given your instructions in the dressing room. Remember to protect yourselves at all times and obey my commands at all times. I expect a clean, fair fight. Any questions from you, Blue? Any questions from you, Red? Touch gloves, go back to your corner, wait for the bell. And here we go, round one. Between Alex Jones and Ronald Smith. Ronald Smith in the red gloves, Alex Jones in the blue gloves. Smith trying to utilize those hands. We saw how mechanical he was there, warming up a bit, uh, you know. It's like punch with the right, punch with the left, work out, even it out. Yeah, wipe your chin with the right, wipe your chin with the left. Yeah, looking at Smith, it looks like you know, he's, he's working his technique because his punches are coming clean the right way. And uh, Jones, you stance know, too as yeah, well, right? Jones is moving around, you know, throwing it from here to there. He's got the switch stance going, and that sometimes throws your opponent off if they're not ready for that. Yeah, no, I mean, if, if you do it with, with, with the, your combos and stuff, It'll confuse your opponent, but if you're just out there just switching back and forth, you know, your opponent usually can, can do something with it. Would you kind of sort of compare that in the sense to like someone who's right handed or left handed and batting, maybe batting or something, they, they could switch the bat, hit from the left or hit from the right? when they switch stance. I mean, is it, can everybody do that or is that a very difficult thing to do? You know do? what, it, 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 it's, it's difficult because uh, it takes a lot of practice. Because, you know, you, you know we're creatures of habit. You do something, you know, one way and that's, that's, how, that's what you do. And, and most coaches tell you, hey, just perfect your, 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 you know, your regular stance. Don't be switching because, you know, you get, you get confused with your punches and stuff like that. Alex but, Jones takes a shot to the dome. Now, Smith is doing a good job here, you know, he's got his composure. Alex tried to take him down, he had a good good sprawl, didn't let it happen. He sort of, he sets up the shots too, he's not just throwing shots just to throw them. Yeah, no, he's doing good with that push kick to the midsection right there. Smith with a nice reach there. Alex Jones is trying to figure out the combination of Smith. Nice kick by Jones. Smith with a nice straight shot. Thirty-four seconds remain. So far, both fighters just content with keeping it here on the feet. Looks like Alex Jones may be trying to change elevation, but Smith ain't having it. Nice knee. Man, that straight jab is killer. Oh yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's coming up nice and clean with that. The timing of Jones, he just keeps on getting caught. 
This is Park making it into a brawl right there, which is throwing uh, Smith off a little bit. Oh, but, yeah. Ooh. Jones needs to cover up. It seems as though every time he was going in there, man, Smith was able to catch him off guard, but Jones was just getting furious there for a second. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, Smith is jabbing. It is clean. It just comes in straight and it connects, you know, nine, 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 out of, nine out of ten times. But right here where, where Jones, you know, starts coming wild, Smith just threw a few clean shots, landed him, and slowed him down. Right here, Jones kind, kind of rushes him, comes in with some... Uh, Turbo shots. Yeah, it, it worked at first, but then, you know, Smith figured it out. Hey, you know what? I just hit him. I mean, it seems as though Alex Jones was trying to get on the inside there, but you could see that uh, Smith, as soon as he gets on the inside, he's got he's letting him know, I got something for you there, too. Exactly. <laughs> Jones rushing in. Jones coming in again. Now Smith. Jones figures, hey, why don't I just come in turbo style and not give you a chance to think? <laughs> exactly. I mean, the more he throws, the better odds he's got about, you know, connect. Got to love the response at one of the promoters here, uh, John Judy. Uh, that smile on his face right now, seeing Alex Jones rushing in. That's what fans like to see. I, it, you know, the sport, people love jujitsu. They love, uh, you know, the stand-up. But I'm an old-school guy, man. I love the stand-up department. Yeah. No, you know what? I don't I, think I'm alone on that, am I? No, you're not. I mean, everybody comes to see a fight. I yeah. mean, when you think fight, you think, hey, two guys stand up, just going at it. But, I mean, when it goes to the ground, I don't mind it if there's ground and pound, you know, if there's action. When the guys are just hugging each other and just trying to work position for submission, it gets a little bit, you know, boring. Yeah, and you know, the dynamics of it when they, you know, someone's like, let's take it to the ground for a second. Someone's punching me in the face. I don't think I could take it. Take it to the ground, and then they come back up. And this is one of those fights. It's about to get back up on the feet. Oh, but now Alex Jones trying to set up this rear naked choke. Oh. oh! It looks deep, too. Alex Jones. Oh, oh man. Out of nowhere. The thing is, Jones is probably like, I should have took it here a while ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, that was nice. I wasn't expecting that at all. No, absolutely not. Smith was just tearing him apart, literally, on the feet. Yeah, I mean, every every takedown Jones tried was stuck. Yeah. And then he finally got one down and boom, sunk that in beautifully. I'm sure Smith is going to go back to the drawing board going, man, that just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Something I'm going to need to study. Throw it to Dean Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, one minute and 27 seconds of round number two. Your winner by tap out from a rear naked choke, Alex True Grit Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, from the spectacular Santa Ana Star Center here in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the bantamweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Robert Romero. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil blue corner, standing five feet 10 inches tall, official weight 144.2 pounds. He represents K Loco MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting Tyrell T-Rex Wisdom. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet, 10 inches tall as well. Official weight also 144.2 pounds. He represents Judgment MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Silver City, New Mexico, presenting Sam the Saiyan Martin. Once again, your referee of this three-round bantamweight bout, Robert Romero, now with the final instructions. Right, fighters, went over the rules before the fight. Fight clean, fight hard, fight fair. Protect yourself at all times, obey me at all times. Go to your corners, get ready to fight. And here we go, round one. 
Tyrell Wisdom in the blue uh, corner and Sam Martin in the red corner. Ooh, Martin with a big high kick. Taken down immediately. One person I know that's very well known for their high kicks is uh, Tony Lopez commentating with us tonight. Thank you for joining us. Oh, pleasure being here, but it looks like uh, it's about to be over right here. Martin looks like he's trying to work this triangle. He's got it in pretty good right there, but Wisdom doing pretty good trying to defend. Maintaining control here. Martin rolls over. This is the worst position to be in. This is so humbling. I know, he's a little punch, man. What can you do? Your, your hand's locked in, your head. Oh, nice. nice. Wisdom. Uses a little wisdom and gets out of there. I had to use that. I oh, had hey. to go there. It was, it was fitting. But, um, and right here, Martin working from the ground. Wisdom's like, you just let the beast go right now, man. Wisdom's got to get past those legs, man. Yeah. Trying to roll in now into the half guard. They say, you know, you know, when you're on the ground, size don't matter, but those legs on, on Martin, man, Jesus Christ. It really, like, pushes people back, really utilizes it. And someone like you with your, you know, length in your uh, legs, man, it's kind of like you use it as a secondary fist. You know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. like you got four hands at that point. Oh, they come in handy, believe me. Because I've seen people, some people throw kicks, but, man, you kind of use that as feeling out. A feel out process, like back up, you know, back up. Yeah, no, yeah, You're gonna yeah. eat some feet. We're well, doing some good jobs, some good ground and pound right here, which we were talking about earlier. You know, that's what you want to see when you're on the ground. Oh Action. man, wisdom really starting to explode here. And he's asking for a little bit of crucifix action, which he would try and pin one arm between okay. wisdom's legs. Now working that arm bar. He rushed into that a little too soon. He got a little too excited. <laughs> Probably could have landed it, but yeah, he just went through every motion but the armbar one. I always wonder if the fighters actually know they're fighting in front of the president. Terry Trevilcock Jr. over there in the white shirt. Fist bumping. John Judy talking about the fight. Like, look at these guys, man. Yeah, now you know what? When you're in that cage, most of the time you don't see nothing outside that cage. Yeah, yeah. You know, the world don't exist. I know a lot of times I get confused when, when the bell rings. Hey, where's my corner? Yeah. Especially the lights, man, shining down. Does he get it? He got it. No. Wow. That's kind of like a soft victory because no one really clapped. Nobody knew what was going yeah, on. No, it was a weird position, too. He, <laughs> he just kind he of like got it. off of him. You're done. <laughs> Wisdom rolls in for that arm bar. He loses it on the first attempt. And go ahead and walk us through us, uh, the replay, Tony. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, there was a lot of action going on here. I mean, you know, he, he's, he's trying to get it here. He, he, he made several attempts in right here. He finally got it, but I mean, it, the position was threw me off because I didn't see it. I mean, we're doing a headstand here. And yeah, and just went from everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, two minutes and 45 seconds of round number one. Your winner by verbal submission, Tyrell T-Rex Wisdom. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the Junior Flyweight Division. Your referee in charge of the action, Robert Romero. Introducing first, the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet five inches tall, official weight 125.6 pounds. He represents Force of One. Ladies and gentlemen, from Lubbock, Texas, presenting Chris Dirty Texas Cortez. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet, 10 inches tall. Official weight, 125 pounds. He represents Fit NHB. Ladies and gentlemen, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting Francisco Dominguez. Once again, your referee of this three-round junior flyweight bout, 
Robert Romero now with the final instructions. Right, fighters went over the rules before the fight. Fight clean, fight hard, fight fair. Protect yourself at all times. Obey me at all times. Go to your corners, get ready to fight. And here we go, round one. Francisco Dominguez in the red corner. And Chris Cortez in the blue corner, in the blue gloves. Cortez comes in with the first shot. Dominguez with a little bit of reach advantage over Cortez. Cortez seems to be fast. I think he's going to probably shoot in for this takedown, it seems. Taking the uh, height and reach advantage away from Dominguez. Yeah, he looks like, he looks like he's, he's trying to get in that wrestling position there. But we could be wrong. Dominguez backing him up with a couple of outside leg kicks and a nice shot. Cortez there it is. with a nice setup. It was nice. Threw the punches, threw them off, and just boom, right away. Cortez predicting the future with taking it to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he just knew what he needed, and he made it happen. You got to watch those legs, though, man. They're up yeah. nice and high. Arm bar, triangle, everything's right there. They did a good job on cranking that neck. Could be a matter of movement that could switch everything and change the pace of this fight. Cortez being very cautious. Dominguez utilizing that height and reach advantage. We've seen Dominguez fight in the past. He's got quick hands. I haven't seen much of his ground game. Possible awesome armbar. Cortez tries to slam him, but sometimes this can work against you. But Cortez may be out. Not out of the woods quite yet. I mean, he's got to stretch him out right there. Looks like Dean, uh, Dominguez uh, opened Cortez up a bit. Oh, man. Cortez trying to slam his way out. Great job by Francisco avoiding any damage by grabbing onto those legs. Trapping Cortez. Cortez, man, with another slam. Those look nice. I don't know, man. That to me, when you pick them up, opens you up more to get some, submitted. Cortez have uh, done with three slams there. <laughs> Another slam. I don't know if that's tiring Cortez out more and giving an advantage right there to Dominguez. Yeah, Dominguez is sort of using that bow constrictor oh, sort of that. theory. Switch over to triangle. And this is what we're talking about, Tony. You know, you keep slamming him, and it, it sets him up. I mean, it depends on your opponent. But Francisco is just going for a ride. He's going with the flow. Yeah. Cortez, I don't know how, when he got split open, if, if it was a shot from Domingo, uh -oh. when he had him tied down. Or what? But I mean, he's squeezing good. 18 seconds. Uh oh. Dominguez. Got their over. Dominguez might have it. And another slam. Damn. Cortez is working that body there. He may have just tightened it up a bit. He may have just. Oh, man, oh, Cortez still. is still there. Yeah, Cortez did a great job there of surviving those submission attempts. I thought after that slam, it may have kind of, like, rattled his cage, you know, because sometimes you, you hit the head of your opponent when you're going down. Yeah. Many things could happen, but he, he kind of, like, came back to life. Domingo's, I mean, Domingo's doing a great job here of just transitioning and trying to get every kind of submission on him. And Cortez, man, his... His strength didn't give up on him, you know, didn't let up at all. I think Francisco may have got the worst of that exchange, too. Man, look at this. This is Rampage Jackson style in Arona. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great battle so far between Francisco Dominguez and Chris Cortez. Chris Cortez in the blue uh, gloves and uh, Francisco Dominguez in the red gloves. Well, Cortez, great job on taking him down the first round, but... Bad execution on, on his positions, you know, given Dominguez every opportunity to, to submit him. Yeah, this might be a great opportunity for Cortez to try out the stand-up with Francisco. Because you, you know how that goes. Sometimes one guy may be better when it comes to the ground game. One guy may be better when it comes to the stand-up. That's the beauty of MMA. And we just haven't seen that part of Francisco. But his ground game is strong. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Cortez needs to be very careful of that. Because what we saw from round one, it seemed as though uh, Dominguez was controlling that entire round. Got a low shot here to the knee. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell you that uh, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to go right back to it. Much respect going out to Cortez. 
Cortez got a little mouse on that eye, bruising him up a bit. And you see the comfortability of uh, Francisco Dominguez. Very calm demeanor. Cortez a little bit of the amped of the two, you know what I mean? His yeah. adrenaline's just pumping, but uh, Francisco just looks a little more controlled here. But now Cortez starts to bring the ground and pound action. I tell you, I, I, I see the power in Cortez's side there, where, where oh, Dominguez is just relaxing, you know, just going for, for moves, you know, with relaxation. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's a good call. Cortez showing a lot of strength, able to weather the storm, but man, he can't, you can only get lucky so many times getting out of submission attempts by someone like Francisco. Yeah, I mean, once that your strength goes, I mean, the way he's using he's, he's He's using up his strength without purpose. And that, that's the worst. And Francisco's just going along for the ride. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you want to be my co-pilot? <laughs> and here we go, Cortez. Getting an opportunity back here on the feet. You know, from, from the stand-up, when Cortez comes in with those bombs, I mean, and they connect, it, it, it rocks Dominguez. But Absolutely. he's a fool. He doesn't keep following up. That's right. Let him up. Back to it. Cortez looking a little bit tired. And like you said, he's been really exerting that energy throughout this entire fight with the explosiveness, throwing, guy, throwing Francisco up in the air. But Francisco's just kind of going with the flow. Taking some shots now. Need to be careful. See, now right, right here, let him back up. That's, oh. that's, <laughs> if, if Domingos goes down like that, you know that's where you don't want to be because he knows, hey, he's safe there. Yeah, he, he could literally stop time right here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he'll be just stuck in the webs of time. But, man, or like I said, uh, Chris Cortez really needs to keep it on the feet. That's where he's really starting to affect this fight. And like I said, you know, one fighter would be strong here, one fighter would be here. It just seems as though Cortez, his is like a little bit of stand-up, a little bit of ground and pound, get away from that fire, because you're going to get sucked in there. Exactly. When, when uh, Domingos wraps him up, hey, it's, it's over. You know, he, he's not taking no damage, and he's slowly winning the, winning the fight. Cortez landing plenty of shots. And right here, Francisco takes one on the chin, tries to swoop underneath. So we'll see how this all pans out in round three. And here we go. Stay, stay on his back. Cortez going back to the ground. It's probably better to keep it on the feet. Now, when he got behind his back, you know, that takedown was good, but then he let the biggest, you know, turn his back and. Ooh. Oh, oh, Dominguez it's... gets caught, and that's it. Nice, and that's what we were talking about. That stand-up. Yeah. yeah. Cortez showing he really had a good stand-up game. Tony Kryptonite Lopez, uh, walk us through this replay. Not much to walk through, man. He just dropped a hard right, and Dominguez went down, and that was it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Robert Romero, has seen enough. Steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, 23 seconds of round number three. Your winner by TKO, Chris Dirty Texas, Cortez. Ladies and gentlemen from the Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the welterweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Joe Coca. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet eight inches tall, official weight 165.8 pounds. He represents Force of One. Ladies and gentlemen, from Clovis, New Mexico, presenting Nico Nathan. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner stands at five feet, 10 inches tall. Official weight, 167.4 pounds. He represents 
Perez Fighting Sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting Sterling El Negro Noche P. Once again, your referee of this three round welterweight bout, Joe Coco, now with the final instructions. Fighters, you've been given your instructions in the dressing room. Remember to protect yourselves at all times and obey my commands at all times. I expect a clean, fair fight. Any questions from you, Blue? Any questions from you, Red? Touch gloves, go back to your corner and wait for the bell. And here we go, round one. Matchup between Nico Nathan in the blue gloves and Sterling Peak in the red gloves. Sterling Peak with a nice little bit of reach advantage here. But uh, Nico Nathan has no issue with that at all as he immediately engages. Sterling Peak with some nice hands. Very comfortable. You know, that's what I've noticed right tonight. You know, the tall guys are just calm out there, relaxed. You know, it, it didn't pan off for the, the fight before, but we'll see what happens on this one. Sterling uh, looks a little bit tightened up here. I'm sure once the fight goes, like he, he'll start to loosen up here a bit, but. Nico Nathan with some nice kicks, but Sterling's got some explosive hands. I, I'm just, I'm anticipating what he's gonna bring to this. Look at this. You could tell. We call those machine gun hands. <laughs> <laughs> Very fast, very quick. It's incredible, he doesn't waste any energy, kind of conserves it. Some fighters will sit there and bounce around and that wastes so much energy. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Sterling's like, I'm not gonna waste any until I hit you. I know, it looks like he's looking for that home run shot right there. Just, let me see, wait, wait. Yeah, laying in the cut there. Look at this, Sterling just commits 1,000% every time. I can see a knockout coming here. Either way, because when Sterling comes out, you know, he, he goes, 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 and he's trying to knock you out. And, and yeah, you, like you said, on the reverse side, the flip side, he could probably get caught in it, but exactly. this is what's making the fight exciting. You're like, okay, Sterling, you're just waiting for that. Oh, man. Nico Nathan just shakes it off like nothing. Some nice kick, though. You can hear him. This is what you call a thriller fight. I mean, like one of those suspense thrillers where you're oh, like, yeah. okay, what's gonna happen here, man? And honestly, you could see Sterling Peak just, just has so much fire in the tank that he's just waiting to unleash it. You know, it's always great when you watch a fight and you don't need to add sound effects because you can hear the, the yeah. effects of the kick or the sure, punch landing. yeah. The best movie ever. Right here, Nico Nathan shoots in, changes elevation, but Sterling Peak is able to fight it off. Oh, oh rock nice em, sock em robots here. That's, that's how you finish around right there. Joe Coca, our ref for this matchup. Oh. Nathan <laughs> hey, he did the he did the Tony Lopez you were talking about. You know, sometimes you just don't know where your corner's at during a fight. We're talking about the inside of that cage. You really can't see all the stuff going on on the outside. Oh, yeah. Especially when you have a little flurry at the end when you just explode, you know. Yeah. You don't know where you're at. You're just throwing away, throwing away, and then you got to look around and say, hey, where's my corner, you know. Sterling says, man, I don't mind taking one on the chin as long as I can get shots in. And here we go, round two, Nico Nathan in the blue gloves and Sterling Peak in the red gloves. So far, both fighters have been standing up, been a stand-up war. No one's really tried to change elevation quite yet. Joe Coca, our rep for this matchup. Steve Hinman joined along with Tony Kryptonite Lopez. And Peak starts things off with that inside leg kick. Nice body kick. 
I think that first round was a warm up for Pete because uh, he's moving around a little bit more. Not that much more, but uh, I can see him. He's uh, loose now. Yeah. It seems as though Peek was like a little, you know, tight with his moves. The first round now loosening up a bit, getting a little comfortable. So far, both fighters just content on the feet. I'm just, ex I I'm anticipating this fight. That's why I haven't really been stalking much because I'm just into this fight. Yeah, no, I mean, these guys, like I said, they're, they're just moving, moving. Look at that, there it is. That is incredible, man. The speed and the tenacity of both of these guys. This yeah, is what's making the fight is both of these guys yeah, these, in there. These guys are tough both ways, you know, because I mean, they take shots and then they, you know, just as they're taking them, they're giving them right back. Backing each other up, you know, it ain't, it ain't one-sided here. Sometimes you can put some of the most, uh, you know, what's incredible on paper with two fighters getting in the cage. But stuff like this. Peek is getting some good shots in right here. Absolutely. Backs up a bit, he goes, what was that? Like he just woke up. Both fighters are uh, just throwing it all on the line right now. Peek coming in, trying to finish things off. It's like he conserved all his energy. He better hope he put him away at this point because, man, that's so much energy exerted. Yeah, he, he's doing a lot of shots. I mean, a lot of them are landing, yeah. doing damage. But yeah, if, if uh, Nathan survives this round, he's going to come back with a fury. And like I was saying earlier, you know, you could put two of the most greatest fighters and, you know, on paper it looks dandy and it could be one of the most boring fights. But it really does take two to tango to make a fight, you know. You could just say it was this one guy that made it, but these two are really making this a, uh, probably, oh, I'd definitely. say, fight of the night definitely. so far. I mean, you you know, we, you see guys that, you know, they get hit like Nathan did and they just drop. Like, Nathan's, I don't want no more. Nathan's coming back like... Just some crazy murder, man. He got blood all over his face. He's like, let's keep doing this. I'm, I'm not hurting. That's right. Oh, man. What a way to end this round. Oh, that was, that was an exciting round right there. A lot of action. <laughs> oh. Blood dripping like a maniac. Takes so many shots, but just keeps coming back. Walk us through the replay, Tony. Yeah, My you, you God. See, you see Pete, he backs him up, and right away, Nathan starts, starts firing back, and gets out and gets himself off the cage. He's like, no, nah, you know what? I ain't going to stand here and just take all this. I'm going to give you some back. You see, I mean, he's just getting blown away here, and all of a sudden, he just fires back and gets out of here. This is like a buffet of punches, a buffet of exchanges. Almost looks at him like, did I just survive that? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it's, like I said, good, good defense, too, by Nathan here. Now, you know, he, he lost probably about 50% of that. That's what kept him in the game still. So much blood splattering all over the place. It's like a tie-dye art form here. Tie-dye all over the mat there. Both fighters really throwing it all on the line tonight. Over and right for Nico Nathan. Peek seems to slow down a little bit his movement from the second round, you know, where he was uh, warmed up. Now I don't know if he uh, overexerted in that second round. It's 13 seconds remains. Both fighters taking their time on this one. Rightfully so. Third and final round, you've made it this far. This is one of those times where you just gotta be a little more cautious. You'd hate to put in that overtime for no vacation. Nico Nathan taking the center, and here comes that explosion again. Nico says, you know what? That's not going to work with me. Oh, no, not this round. 
It's almost uh, equivalent to, I guess, when you're playing Super Mario Brothers and you get the star and you're just invincible. That is what the Sterling Peak is like. And you could see Nico Nathan's like, nah, nah, not again. You grabbed the star, didn't you? Here we go. How many know this is not Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Peak, yeah, he, he's saving it up so when he, he gives our stories, he explodes and he connects, makes, makes good, 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 good. It's like his nitro boost, I'd have to say. Yeah, but it seems like it's fading too, though. Yeah, it sure is. Off, that, off those explosions, Nathan, you know, came back a little stronger. Nico just stopped him dead in his tracks there. He saw that spit just come out of his mouth from taking one on the chin. And now just kind of sizing him up here, cornering him. You know, some fights can just, you know, go on the ground, be all strategic, but this is this is where you look at the sport and go, man, there is some violence going on in there tonight. Oh, yeah, definitely. There is some spectacular violence going but on in the what, cage. It, to me, it, it, it's like an artful violence right here. It really is. I mean, there's no other way to describe that other than artful violence. And trust me, we, we have seen thousands of fights and this is just one of those fights I'm going to remember for quite some time. Both fighters just bringing it to each other. Oh! oh. Beautiful batsman at the end right there. <laughs> Gotta love the look. He's like, you like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> great job. Both guys, great job. Yeah, absolutely, man. I wish both guys could come out of this a winner, but I think um, there's a possible chance that Sterling Peak might walk away with a victory. Yeah, I mean, a little more damage was done by Sterling you know, with those shots coming in. But like I said, not taking them away from Nathan. I mean, he did a great job, you know, coming back, staying in there and weathering the storm. Yeah, he never once backed down. I think if any other fighter was in there, they may have backed down on some of those punches. They brought it to each other. We throw it to Dean Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the scorecards, a hand for these two warriors. After three rounds of welterweight action, we go to the scorecards. Judge Kenny Ortiz scores this bout 29 to 28 in favor of P. Mark Sanchez, 29-28 in favor of Nathan. And finally, Stan Saavedra, 29 to 28 for your winner by split decision, Nico Nathan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the spectacular Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King in the Cage and General Tire present this featured belt live on Facebook. Sanctioned by the New Mexico State Athletic Commission, Chairman Gavin Pantoja, Executive Director Richard Espinosa, Deputy Director Kathy Ortiz, Commissioners Rob DeBuck, Diego Escabel, and Elias Quintana is in conjunction with King of the Cage Incorporated, President and Founder Terry Trebilcock Jr., Matchmaker John Judy, Promoter Tom Vaughn. The three judges scoring this bout will be Kenny Ortiz, Mark Sanchez, and Chris Tejas. After the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Joe Coca. And now, fight fans, here we go. Put your hands together for this special bout. Three rounds of women's MMA in the Adam Weight division. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing 5'1", official weight 105.4 pounds. This Spartan boxing fighter has a combined three victories. Ladies and gentlemen, from Medford, Oregon, presenting Submachine Gun Kelly Villarino.
Her opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire, red corner, also stands at 5'1". Official weight, 105.8 pounds. This fit NHB fighter has a combined four victories. Ladies and gentlemen, from the ABQ Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting Jamie Henshaw. Once again, your referee of this women's attraction, Joe Coco now with final instructions, three rounds scheduled. Fighters, you've been given your instructions in the dressing room. Remember to protect yourselves at all times and obey my commands at all times. I expect a clean, fair fight. Any questions from you, Blue? Any questions from you, Red? Touch gloves, go back to your corners and wait for the bell. Joe Coca, our ref for this matchup, former King of the Cage veteran here. Villarino in the blue gloves, Hinshaw in the red. Hinshaw with several victories under her belt, possible tighter, uh, title contendership in the near future, but she's got to get through Villarino. We know she's got a tough stand-up game. Oh yeah, definitely. I've, I've seen her, you know, I've seen a few of her fights, and uh, she has some beautiful hands and kicks. I mean, it, she, she likes to, she likes to work. Yeah, we know that we haven't seen too much of her ground game, and she's kind of talked about it in the past. She's like, I'd rather stand up. That's that's where I'm really comfortable. She kind of made the transition from stand up into MMA. Still working out the kinks, but you know, most of her opponents can't get through her and can't get her to the ground. And this is where she's most, uh, you know, this is where she shines. Yeah, and of course, it definitely it's more entertaining. Yeah, I mean, right now, like I said, just nonstop kicks coming from both sides. Actually, kicks and punches. And Hinshaw is the same type of fighter. She's like, okay, you want to stand up? Thanks. Oh, shakes it right off. Hinshaw with the pinpoint accuracy. Hinshaw out of Fit and HB, headed out by Tom Vaughn and Arlene Sanchez out there. Great gym. Hinshaw, who is. Uh, had several matchups here at King of the Cage, a great amateur career. And the atom weight division has just exploded here at King of the Cage. It's something that uh, required so many contracts, so many more female fighters that have been on the map and needing this uh, exposure to get out there. And they've uh, done a really good job. I've, I've seen all these fighters, they've been signing the atom weight division, they are all I mean, you really can't, on paper, when you put it all together, you can't really pinpoint who's going to be winning what. It's, it's just, man. Oh, yeah, good variety of girls here. They put a lot of work into finding these fighters in Villa Reno out of the state of Oregon. Like I said, Henshaw loves the stand-up game as well, but both fighters really bringing it to each other. Tonight's event being brought to you in part by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And of course, AccurateFishing.com. A little scramble between these two and an inside leg kick for Villarino. You know, I always like to pick, you know, before the fight, who, who do I think is going to win? Right now, I, I didn't pick nobody, but I can't tell. <laughs> yeah, is there a bet where it's like, I, I don't know who's going to win. Can we have <laughs> a wild card? <laughs> Villarino's got a lot of heat on the hands. I would say Henshaw is more the technical fighter, and if this does go to the ground, Villarino could be in a little bit of trouble. So uh, it, it does surprise me that Henshaw is on her feet. Not that Henshaw can't hold it. Uh, I, think, I think she's liking it on her feet because yeah. she's connecting pretty good. Absolutely. Henshaw, like I said, if she took this to the ground, Villarino could be in trouble. But I think Henshaw's more like, eh, I want to use my hands tonight. Kind of want to test it out. Oh, I, think, I think she's winning on the exchanges. Yeah, she absolutely is. Villarino continues to circle on the outside here. Inside leg kick. I think it's one of those reserve things for Henshaw. Oh man, more shots. Man, 
man, they are just scrapping out there. Oh, nice, nice. The power of these shots in this weight class is just so incredible. I mean, these aren't just shots that are just like, these are ending. Oh, shots. yeah. Now, I was about to say, I think his shot was slowing down, but I think she was just saving it up to explode like that. Now, the beauty of, it, of this is, is if Henshaw gets in a little bit of trouble and she finds herself getting rocked or stunned by a shot, she does have that ground game she could fall back on that she's so well-rounded in. So right now it's all about, okay, let's just see how it is on the feet, but so far it is working for her. And it's working to her advantage. I think uh, Hitchoff has figured out Valerina right here. So she's, she's not worried about going to the ground right now. No, absolutely not. I think she's just luring her in and come back to the Santa Ana Star Arena in the state of New Mexico once again for another night of mixed martial arts action. Joe Coca, our rep for this matchup. Hinshaw in the red gloves. Villarino in the blue gloves. So far, Hinshaw ended that fight of the last round with some huge high notes. Henshaw, she just set it up, wait, waiting for that moment, and she's going to explode on Valerina again. I can see it. Henshaw continues to take center cage here. I, I think she's got Valerina confused right here because uh, every time she comes in, she gets cracked pretty good on the exchanges. Yeah, Villarino trying to figure out the combination of Henshaw. And uh, it was sort of the opposite in uh, round one in the beginning of round one, but now it, it seems as Henshaw's got a grasp on uh, the skills of uh, Villarino. Henshaw says, I'm not backing down one bit, as she continues to press forward and a nice high kick to the dome of Villarino. And an outside leg kick, that one hurt. Oh, and another high kick by Hinshaw. Hinshaw is just a beast, man. I mean, there is just nothing but power behind her kicks. You just hear it. It's not like a pitter patter, oh, yeah. it's just straight impact. Devastating impact at that. You see Valerina. Val Villarina, I'm sorry. Her legs already, you know, are starting to redden right there. Yeah, you can see it. It's starting to really affect the balance over time here. And you can see that Hinshaw hasn't been exerting much energy. Every shot she has done or attempted has, has been effective every single time. Yeah, she, she's throwing with a lot of power. And like I said, when they connect, they connect, and I mean, they, they damage. Yeah. Henshaw, a little bit of cut above the eye. Villarino with a nice left. Like I said, Henshaw's had several battles to her name. And one of our top female contenders here in the uh, Adam Weight division. I would imagine she would get a title shot here in the near future. Depending on the outcome of the matchup between Andy Wynn and Melissa Karagiannis. Just a little bit of history. Jamie Henshaw has defeated Karagiannis. So if Karagiannis ends up taking the title from Andy Wynn, you could probably see Hinshaw in the near future getting another title shot, but that just all depends on the uh, current champion, Atomweight champion Andy Wynn and Melissa Karagiannis who will be uh, fighting her for that title. But right now, Hinshaw and Villarino in the cage. Villarino in the blue gloves, Hinshaw in the red gloves. 
Oh, and a kick to the back. And this is what I'm talking about. Hinshaw says, okay, you want to change elevation? Here we go. This might be a bad spot for Villarino. I don't, you know, know about the ground game. Haven't seen too much of it because most of her fights are on the feet. But now Hinshaw's getting that full mount, possibly still in the half guard. And I believe that is Steve Hanna, uh, King of the Cage veteran in the corner of Hinshaw as well tonight. Oh, nice elbow by Hinshaw. And of course, Tim Means, Dirty Bird Means. I think Hinshaw waited a little too long to take her down on this round. You know, Villarita did a good job of cutting her open and uh, you know, pressing the judges in this round. Villarino with a nice shot. She says, I'm gonna score as many last minute points as possible. Hinshaw, who exerted some energy there. See Villarino was able to pop off some shots there and score some last minute points. Let's take a look at the replay as Tony Lopez walks us through it. Yeah, right here you see Hinshaw taking her down. You know, it's like, it looks like, okay, you know, advantage, Hinshaw, but Valerina pops right back up and he just starts unloading on her, making sure the judges don't take this round away from her. Yeah, the pressure of knowing that you got taken down and then all of a sudden having to, like, make up for those points, you're like, hey, man, i got to make up for the last 30 seconds. Yeah. Judges, judges uh, score those takedowns way too high. Yeah. Joe Coca, our rep for this matchup. It's like waiting for the ride to start. You know, everybody's like, all right, buckle <laughs> yeah. up, everybody. Here we go. And here we go, third and final round. Well, I'd say the first round to me went to Henshaw. Second round, Valerina. See, we'll, we'll see who wants it the bad, baddest right here. It really is. It's all going to boil down to who wants this the most. I'm sure both of them want it the most. But, man, that's a different story when you're in round three. Exhausted. But both fighters still, still coming strong here. Villarino continues to circle around on the outside. Looks like they're just happy, you know, just dancing around, trying to, you know, get their energy back so they can explode. But this could be bad for either or, you know, when one of them gets ex enough energy up there and just blows them away. And it, it sometimes happens like that all the time. And you also see the fact that when one guy starts jumping up, starts getting all kinds of energy, it, it feeds off the other guy, and the other guy feeds off that energy. Oh, yeah. So far, both fighters are like, let's just go for the grand slam every time. <laughs> Bill Arino is uh, really impressing me tonight. Standing with the likes of Jamie Henshaw. I'm, I'm glad how, how uh, you know, we said, you know, Bill Arena not too much good on the ground, but she did a good job of popping back up, you know, when she got taken down. She did, and I, I think that that's one of the main techniques they, they more than likely work on. I'm sure she's training on the ground all the time, but it's more like if you've got talent and you got that talent to knock people out, which Villarino does, you know, the other stuff can kind of mold into it, like, all right, I got to defend takedowns for now until I get stronger in the game. But she did a great job against someone like Hinshaw, so it just shows she's, she's in in there for a reason, and she's really bringing it to her tonight. Yeah, you know, she wants to fight her, her fight, which is stand-up. So if she goes down, hey, do everything you can to get back up and just keep implementing what you know and what you do best. 
And for Villarino, this is a really tough fight with the experience that Hinshaw brings in. And she's hanging in there. She's doing so great. I mean, she's really giving her a run for her money. Yeah, no, she, she's picking her apart pretty good. I mean, Hinshaw comes in with those power shots. But I, I think Valerie, Villarina, you know, she's moving around enough to, to avoid a lot of it and then inflict her own damage on her. Absolutely. Staying active in there. Villarino has not backed down one bit. Neither is Hinshaw. Oh, right on the jaw. And Hinshaw shakes it off like I'm the Terminator. I've got a skull of metal. Man, did you just... Man, that was just such a crack. I, I just heard that crack throughout it the was, stadium. But you know what? Just since it, it didn't phase her as much yeah. as, you know, you know, the way it sounded and everything, that I'm like, I overlooked it. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe it wasn't nothing. Yeah. It's incredible. Oh. oh. Villarino says, bring it on. Man, that was straight to the chin. It was a, that was a nice little slap with that foot, though. <laughs> yeah, that was. That was like an uppercut, uh, a toe uppercut. Yeah. <laughs> and right now, Villarino just circling around. 42 seconds to do something spectacular. This is a very close fight. I would give a little bit of the edge to Hinshaw with that takedown. And a couple of shots that landed, but... Yeah, definitely Hinshaw's had, had more of the power shots. I mean, the, the girls are, are pretty much even all the way through, except for just in that factor. Yeah, and like you said, that takedown can really take away from a fight that could have been possibly a draw or it could have been, you know, a split decision. That's where the things start to matter and start yeah. to add up. Oh, man. Ten seconds, finishing high, good. Villarino shoots in for a takedown, but a great way to avoid damage. Ah, much respect between these two. Let's take a look at the replay as Tony Lopez walks us through it. I mean, as you see, like I said, there's no quitting either one of these girls. When they bang, they bang. It goes back and forth. And here at the end, you know, you see Bellarina trying to just hold on so, you know, no, no damage is done. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of women's atom weight action here in the great state of New Mexico, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Mark Sanchez scores this bout 29 to 28, while judges Kenny Ortiz and Chris Teas both have it 30 to 27. All three in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, Jamie Henshaw. Jamie, you picked up a big win here tonight. You look great. You went the distance. How do you assess your performance? Uh, I think I did great. I took my time. Um, I showed you just a little bit of what I can do. I'll be always better, always striving to get better. And thank you, King of the Cage. Thank you, um, Santa Ana Star Center, all the fans, my gym at FHB, my team Wild Bunch. Thank you all. In the second round, you have the cut above your left eye. Uh, your opponent started a laceration on your face. You are bleeding pretty good during that round. Uh, I'll tell you, your, your cut man or woman who was ever working your corner did an outstanding job on getting that uh, really wrapped up. Uh, going into the third round, you felt some immediacy. You had to win that round. Um. A little bit, not really. I knew I was winning the rounds, but I knew because I was going to leave it in the judge's hand, I had to kind of keep it going and win that round. And where does Jamie Henshaw go now with King of the Cage after this big win here tonight? Um, I want to go to the top. You know, I think I deserve a title shot. <laughs> well, you are certainly on your way. Jamie Henshaw, Fit NHB. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three-round bout in the Bantamweight Division. Your referee in charge of the action, Mike 
Valdez. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing five feet nine inches tall, official weight 145.2 pounds. He represents Perez Fighting Systems. Ladies and gentlemen, from Berlin, New Mexico, presenting Tarek Raged Perez. Here's opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire. Red corner stands at six feet tall. Official weight, also 145.2 pounds. He represents Jackson Wink MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting John Sparks. Once again, your referee of this three-round bantamweight bout, Mike Valdez now with the final instructions. All right, gentlemen, we're the rules of the locker room. Protect yourselves at all times. We'll be my commands at all times. You want to touch him? Do him now. Let's fight. And here we go, round one. Derek Perez takes on John Sparks. John Sparks in the red gloves. Derek Perez in the blue, and immediately Perez comes in with a barrage of punches. I'm wasting no time on that flurry. No way. Absolutely not. Sparks holding on to a guillotine, but he, what does he need to do to start getting that working? Uh, just position. You know, his position is just loose right there. He's got, he's got to get in a little tighter because you can see the back of his head kind of popping out, which he, means he has his head up. And he's safe. Sparks trying to sustain the situation. Thus far doing a good job, but it looks like Perez is just trying to scoop him up. You know, the one thing I always say is people, when they're in this position, you know, when they, you know Perez was going for the takedown, um, you should throw some punches in the face. Yeah. You know, you always, you see, always, you always see everybody just, hey, defend it, take that, defend it, defend it. Hey, as you defend it, you can strike. Punish him with some elbows, exactly. side elbows, right? Perez trying to punish with some knees, trying to get that uh, outside lead trip, but it doesn't work for him. Sparks gets right out, and a nice push kick. Man, that didn't feel good. Sparks starting to unload. Sparks is like, I got hands, and I got feet. Oh. Sparks slips a bit. Sparks needs to cover up, man. Those hands are a little bit low. A little bit? Yeah, I think he's coming <laughs> with the wrong head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got great striking, great ability. Perez says oh. bring it on and catches him on the chin. Perez says, I got hands too, man. The momentum of this fight is just rocking here. Get it right back to it, man. The clock is still rolling. Let's do this. Yeah, you know, that's when you need those uh, custom-made mouthpieces so you don't, you don't have to worry about that mouthpiece flying out. You can see Perez stop him right in his tracks every time Sparks comes in with some shots. Right there. He's got to watch that hook. Every time he throws a hook, he gets caught. But right there, this time, he lands it. See, right there, every single time Perez is getting him with that right. Right there again, every time he throws that hook, Sparks is in trouble. So Sparks will throw that hook, and look at Perez, always there. Yeah, Sparks, he, I think Sparks just coming in too wild. Yeah. You know, from all over, all over the place. No balance, and that's where Perez just capitalizes. Perez is going to get him with that right. Sparks really needs to understand that Perez is... He's got him figured out right there every time. Sparks throws a left. Perez is right there to catch him on the chin. Look. Oh! Look at Isaiah. Yeah, Sparks got that jab and, and that cross just pinpointed on him. That but left his... has been become his demise here. Perez is looking to hang on a little bit longer. You know what? I mean, I say Perez has better shots. But Sparks, man, he, he lands them. Yeah. And he makes them count. Oh, there we go. That, that was a home run shot there. Just striking a miss, though. I can't tell you who's going to win this fight now. 
I mean, this was just back and forth. This is anybody's fight. It's gonna, who's gonna catch who? Perez getting a little tired. Oh! oh. What a battle between these two. So much heart being displayed. Each time one guy lands a shot, the other guy's like, all right, I got a little something. It's, it's coming here. It's pretty soon. Yeah, I think those shots finally caught up with Perez right there. Oh, Sparks is looking to finish, and that's it. I'm sure Sparks is thinking in his mind, this could have went either way. I just happened to be the guy oh, that yeah, persevered, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, Sparks was doing a good job, but his balance, man, that's what was making me think that, you know, Perez was going to get the advantage. But, uh, you know, enough of those shots from Sparks connected to where it just took yep. its toll on, on Perez. You said that, yeah, and you said the precision of Sparks is exactly what it was. You yeah. Know? If you can throw a thousand punches and have one quality punch, you know, those thousand punches don't mean anything. No, exactly. You know what I mean? But, like, in, in this case, though, Perez's punches were really had a lot of sting on it. Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Mike Valdez has seen enough, steps in, calls a halt to this bout due to strikes. The official time, four minutes and four seconds of round number one. Your winner by TKO, John Sparks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the lightweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Robert Romero. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil blue corner, standing five feet 10 inches tall, official weight 152.2 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, from Surrey, London, England, presenting Isaac Love. Here's the opponent across the cage, butting out of our general tire red corner, stands also at 5 feet 10 inches tall, official weight 155 pounds. He represents Fit NHB. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting Sherwin, the genius. Price. Once again, your referee in charge of this three round lightweight bout, Robert Romero, now with the final instructions. All right, fighters, run over the rules before the fight. Fight clean, fight hard, fight fair. Protect yourself at all times, obey me at all times. Go to your corners, get ready to fight. And here we go, round one. Sherwin Price gets set to take on Isaac Barnes. Isaac Barnes in the blue tape gloves and Sherwin Price in the red tape gloves. Isaac Barnes with a little bit of reach advantage coming in with some San Shao Kung Fu style here. I love it. Love this you know, showmanship. This part, this part when someone comes out like that, it does confuse your opponent a little bit. Like, hey, what's he going to do? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. this movement, you know, not used to seeing. Sherwin Price is like, man, you're making me mad. <laughs> <laughs> I love this style, man. It's, it's a little bit of taunting. It's a little bit of flaunting. It's a little bit of yeah. insulting. <laughs> Barnes has a nice little smile on his face when he does his moves, though. Sherwin Price, this is, that's a great analyzation of that, Tony. Oh, makes him pay dearly with a nice takedown. Yeah, you know, we see Barnes just moving, you know, standing. I wonder how much ground does he have, because. Maybe he was luring him in. Maybe he may know something we don't, I'm not sure, but so far it looks like Sherwin Price is controlling it. <laughs> may not have been the best plan, but Sherwin is doing a good job thus far. But, man, that, that was uh Gotta love that. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I love the showmanship. I, I just say Price went in for the takedown just because he didn't know what, what Barnes was going to do with all that movement. I've had several fighters ask me over the years, you know, with all the fights that I've seen, 
what are some of the things that you could probably tell fighters, um, you know, how to how to get their name out there more. You gotta you gotta be a showmanship sometimes. It's sometimes a showmanship. People want to be entertained. Oh, yeah. They want to see uh, great action. And uh, let's see if he can live up to the his entertainment here. Because if he wins that fight, Sherwin Price is probably gonna be really frustrated after that. You know? Oh yeah. But no, Sherwin Price is here. You go. This is payback for all the smirks. Well, Barnes needs to do a little more than just there you go. Yep. Cover up. You just cover up. I mean, ref's going to stop it. Yeah, absolutely. Now taking the back, Sherwin Price looking to finish this fight. Oh. Yeah, here. that's deep. That's oh, right. yeah. Sherwin Price is like, are you dancing now? <laughs> <laughs> Sherwin Price is. <laughs> oh, man, I love this. What an excellent fight. Yeah, Barnes, you know, trying to get some submissions on it, but when Price got on top, it was over. Sherwin Price with a nice exclamation mark at the end of this fight, man. He's like, not only did I beat you down, but I got back up and started doing some San Chow uh, Kung Fu moves myself. Yeah, he was tapped before he even got flanked out all the way right there. You know, he was in deep. Welcome back. A nice little replay of Sherwin Price getting the nice victory over Barnes. It yeah. was a scramble. Oh, it was, it was. He, you know, he was dropping some ground and pound. And when Barnes decided, hey, you know what? I can't stay here. Turned over and was trying to prop, prop himself up. Price just sunk in a nice, beautiful rear naked choke. And before they hit the ground, he was already tapping. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, two minutes and 10 seconds of round number one. Your winner by tap out from a rear naked choke, Sherwin, the genius, Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Santa Ana Star Center, Rio Rancho, New Mexico, King of the Cage and General Tire present this three round bout in the beef flyweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Robert Romero. Introducing first in the Lucas Oil blue corner, standing five feet five inches tall, official weight 136 pounds. He represents Force of One. Ladies and gentlemen from Hereford, Texas, presenting Paco, the Texas Punisher Castillo. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of our general tire red corner, stands at five feet seven inches tall, official weight, also 136 pounds. He represents Fit NHB. Ladies and gentlemen, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, presenting the King of the Cage Junior Flyweight World Champion, Tim Timbo Slice Sosa. Tim Sosa, Timbo Slice. That pizza made me a little bit hungry when I saw that pizza logo. And of course, Sosa backs up a bit. Paco Castillo. Oh, like good it. night. Oh, man. Sosa's like, I want to continue work, though. Man. That was, that was a nice kick. Castillo didn't even expect that. He, he had a look on his face. Come on, what do you got? Yeah, his knees just totally buckled. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time, 11 seconds, round one. The winner by knockout, Tim Timbo Slice Sosa. 